Welcome to Geomancy. As always, thank you for joining me. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Today we're going to get into some more America is the Old World. And I'm going to show you more interesting footage and some other angles of footage I've already shown that will help deepen our understanding. So we're starting here in Brandywine State Park which was the site of the Battle of Brandywine that began on September 11th, 1777, fought between the Americans on one side and the British who partnered with the Hessians on the other side. You can see this crisscrossing wall all throughout the site and we wonder how deep does it go down into the earth? We also wonder what was it used for? I mean, you can't tell me that they needed a wall like this for a battle because it's not really keeping anyone out. Um, it's easy to hop right over or just clear some of this down. Unless it's buried deep, deep, deep beneath the ground. I learned that the Hessians were a part of the Holy Roman Empire. And we know who the Holy Roman Empire was and what they were a part of. They were the swarthy Germans that Ben Franklin was concerned about. Take a look at this old tree. One thing I notice in America woods is many young trees, which indicate relatively new growth. But this tree right here is quite old. And I found another tree not too far that basically grew into the rock wall. And as you can see, this tree is also quite old. So this had me wondering, like, how old is the tree? How old is the wall for the roots to be growing around the stones? This lets you know that the wall was there long before the tree was there. And the tree looks at least 200, maybe 300 years old. Now here's a different site. This is Ridley Creek State Park. And we find another rock wall, a dam in this case. But still, how did this get here? How was it done? I mean, the United States is filled with interesting conundrums in the woods that you really got to wonder, how is it built? I mean, look at these, these, these rocks. And it goes deep beneath the water, too. I'm no expert in dams, but this seems like quite a feat. And um, this is just a handful of interesting stone walls, natural formations, or unnatural, but in nature. Now this next one that I'm going to show you, also a dam, this is a Pickering Creek in Phoenixville. Now I've driven past this and it always catches my eye because we have this wall which appears to be polygonal masonry. Spectacular. But they want to tell us that they built this for a dam that built in 1900 and they dynamited boulders and used the boulders to create that. So I don't know, I guess they dynamited the boulders, the pieces scattered or broke up and then they just picked them up and stacked them very neatly like this. This is the kind of wall that you could find in megalithic sites almost anywhere in the world. Was it really dynamited? Some of it just looks too, too perfect. But I'm, I'm no expert, I'm just an observer. And if you look on the backside, you can see smaller pieces. They say that the dam was destroyed. Hmm. Well, I've shown this in Rochester before, but since we're on dams and gorges, I figured we'd take another look at some interesting water infrastructure. What's up with these caves and these holes? I mean, what happened there? 
How old is this site? There seems to be many layers and layers built on top. Repurposed each time for something different. If it wasn't so cold, I would show you more of Rochester, but I wasn't trying to be outside all day. Upstate New York, though, filled with fascinations. Beer, too. Now, this, also in Rochester, this is a reservoir. And we find reservoirs all over the place with very interesting stories. The capacity of this place is 144 million gallons. That's right. And if you pause this, you can read a little bit about it. But I don't know. We wonder about hills, reservoirs, water infrastructure. Now, Niagara Falls, I couldn't not show this after showing the previous couple sites with waterfalls, because this is the grandpappy of waterfalls in the United States. But as we know, this was home to a lot of hydroelectric developments. Even Nikola Tesla spent a period of time in Buffalo. And I believe they were known as the Electric City. Just like in Rochester, you can see over there what looks to be like different uh, caves, disused infrastructure. So we really wonder how old is all of this? Was it done in the 1800s like they want to tell us every time? Not so sure. But we're going to check out some of these buildings in Buffalo and um, the brickwork is just top class as you can see now we got to be observant and notice that the size and scale of the windows is very tall I mean these are easily 10 foot 12 foot and if you look at the cathedral next to it or the church um, also scaled very tall this is a theme that I notice in many cities where you'll find these amazing churches which seem to be built for much larger beings. In the neighborhood, you will find homes which also seem like they could have been built for taller beings. And a good old 1800 date, oops, excuse me, buddy, 1800 date on the building there I don't know. I don't know, but I do know that this is a splendor. And Buffalo is full of these types of amazing churches. I wonder who built them. I know it's not who we were told. And were these structures churches, as we've been asking? I mean, I don't think God requires a building like that. But I think some advanced technology or infrastructure might. and we just repurposed it. Now here's the National Cathedral in DC, which I showed in part two, but they've been renovating this for the last 12 years. And as you can see here, they have a couple of the parts that they're replacing and somebody thought they were funny. I wonder if they're showing us here how they were actually built in the first place using cast geopolymer or concrete or some other type of material. And many suspect that all of the churches and cathedrals were built using this type of technology, essentially 3D printing the materials. It would explain the precision. 
I mean, we're trying to figure out how with hand tools they could have done a lot of this work and they might not have used hand tools. These buildings, they speak, they're perfect, they're flawless. And as I mentioned in the last video, this building was said to have been built in the 1900s, shortly before the Great Depression. I don't know if I buy that. But it's taking them a long time to renovate. Now, we couldn't show DC without showing an obelisk opposed to a dome. If you're new to geomancy, look for this. Where you see this, you know that there's power. Here's Richmond, the capital, rich mound. Again, everything is a mound, a mount, a dome. These mounds, they represent the female energy, as you're familiar with. So it's no wonder why capitals have domes. And I mean, this site is definitely up atop a mound. And they whitewashed the building. It could have been brick or stone, but they stucco it and plaster it with lime. So we don't know the true age. This could have been built 20 years ago or 2000 years ago or 200 years ago. But as you see, there is something beneath the mound. And I also look for retaining walls in cities. So these type of really old retaining walls, and in this case, this has a fence with fasces, not feces, fasces. Um, we know that this is an old wall. This is the old city hall of Richmond, which I also showed previously. But I mean, this building looks perfect. And again, they've been renovating that for some years, probably longer than it took them to build it. Now notice the brickwork on this one, right? On the left side, you're gonna see our best attempt at recreating old world brick. And you'll just notice how insubstantial it looks compared to this section, which has the old world brick and ornamentation and really just has a lot of character. Dominion Energy Center. I wonder if they're telling us something about this, this building and this architecture. Looks powerful. In Richmond, we also see a lot of similar types of architectural styles, downtown architectural styles, where we've got these storefronts on the first floor and apartments up above. In this case, again, they're in disuse. But the scale of everything is also much, much taller than we would need. I mean, the storefronts there are about 12 feet. So something happened here in the south as you can see, this building is partially underground. And this might be my favorite picture that I took in Richmond because this shows us that something happened. And just note the steps. I'll show you more of that. Greenville, South Carolina. And we get more flooding. This is actually one of my favorite images as well. Because how are you going to explain this to me? And the bricks, bricks, bricks are everywhere. How are these bricks all made? How are they all laid? How old is this shell of a building? And why is it in such good condition? Right next to water also.
Nothing we built would last this long. Now in Charleston, we get a lot of nice brick architecture, first floor, storefront, second and third livable space. We get very nice bricks. When I saw this, I've just been trying to wonder how those bricks were made. And they weren't too bad with the interior either. Obviously, we're going to find these guys wherever we find monuments and literal masonry. The cemeteries, I might do in America is the Old World Cemetery Edition because I think the cemeteries might be some of the most telling clues. St. Philip's Church. Savannah, we've got the same stuff. Golden domes. And we see that the city goes deep below ground level. We've got interesting architectural forms everywhere. And this building was the Freemasons Hall. And it's sitting right on top of the depths of the city, which, by the way, are built in brick. Many, many bricks. So again, this is the South. I've been showing you the last couple minutes the South. This is still the South. A lot of Americans have their own preconceived notions of the South, myself included, until I went there and I found things like this. I was talking with one of the foremen of this project who's responsible for shoring, which is keeping the building up while they renovate, so supporting the building. And he was saying that they could not figure out how they got this building done back in the late 1800s when they were said to have done. And today we have all the tools. I mean, this is just precision. Really everywhere in Savannah was precision. As usual, the banks take over. You can see that Bank of America. But again, why does the South need all of this type of old world architecture? What was really going on here? Who was living here? Everywhere you go, you're going to find something that seems out of place. At least out of place given the narrative. Like this, Georgia's first black nun, Mother Matilda Beasley. Well, the late 1800s did her pretty nicely because look at her congregation. She gets this amazing red brick building. I mean, truly, like, this is... Not seen too many churches like this. Look at the, the quality of the, the brick coursing and the brickwork. I hope my last video, Bricks as Batteries, opened your eyes to the impossibility of brick structures when they were said to have been done. Look at the quality of these bricks. Look at the mortar tolerance. I mean, this is precision. This is not amateur hour. And this is just one casual Catholic church in Savannah, Georgia. So everywhere you go, you're going to see just mind-blowing stuff and things that don't quite line up with the historical narrative again i've talked about the south in my own preconceived notions in this black cemetery we find the names of prominent people i mean this this sister was in the order of the eastern star 
back in the 1800s. So what was really going on? The Bryans? There's a whole county in Georgia named after the Bryans. Who were these people? The Habershams? It's a main street in Georgia and a county, but the narrative tells us that it's a different Habersham. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. And in this cemetery in Savannah, these are victims that are said to have died from the yellow fever epidemic. But we find these headstones that seem to have Dutch gables, just like uh, the architectural form. And we find these types of headstones in just about every cemetery all over the United States. Now take a look at this one headstone and leave a comment if you have any good idea of how this was done. Because this looks like it was machined, laser etched, 1819, 35 years old. All right, we couldn't do America is the Old World without going to Philadelphia, of course. But I'm going to show you some very nice estates and mansions that are in the Fairmount Park section of Philadelphia. And here you can see windows buried well below. Now, in every single one of these mansions, which were all built between the mid 1700s and the mid 1800s, you find very tall doorways and windows, high ceilings and windows that are buried below. Pretty nice places. These were said to be some of the summer homes for Philadelphia's prominent and wealthy people. But you already know what I think. These were taken over. These were reset estates that basically were doled out to the newcomers. And I believe they were there. Inherited, just like everywhere. Again, they were just having fun with these architectural features. We're mixing stone, brick, and what appears to be either cut masonry or I'm not so sure. At this mansion, we had a little housekeeper, as you can see, just making sure that uh, everything is going smoothly. But again, these are windows. This is a section that is below ground level. So here's what I think happened. Whenever the mud flood happened, all of these buildings and cities and towns obviously got buried. And when they came to find everything, they had to first dig out, then figure out how they were going to re-engineer the buildings. So they moved the entrance up and they kept the first floor as a basement. The biggest thing that I notice when I look at all these mansions is the stairwells don't fit at all. They look much newer and in much worse condition. I mean, you can see in the center there what looks like a door that goes quite low below the ground. So I think where that window was, was actually the original door. But hey, I could be wrong about all of this. And again, this porch, which is new, not the same quality. So they had to basically stucco these because it would reveal the true age if they didn't. If they left it as brick or whatever material it actually was, we would all know that these homes were much, much older than we were told. So by applying the whitewash, it, it confuses everyone. They can tell us it was 17 this, 18 that. But if we actually saw the guts, we would know it's probably much older. 
I think the most interesting thing is that all of these mansions are pretty much in disuse. Different parts of Philly, though, we have very nice, almost a whole different era and time period of homes and buildings. Again, if you've watched one or two of my videos, Philly is the heart and soul of the old world. But you know what? Pittsburgh has a lot of interesting stuff too. Like this star fort. And remember that rock wall in Pickering Creek in the beginning that I showed you and how precise it was? Well, look at this, this star fort wall. Look at the precision that is needed to build this. And we're, I, I have a list, I'll link it in the description, of over 300 star forts worldwide that you can see on Google Earth. And we're, we're just to assume that they were casually doing this all over the world next to water, right next to rivers, typically, or oceans. In this case, this is three rivers in one place. Pittsburgh is pretty special in that regard, which is probably why they did everything they did there and established it. Now let's check out that interesting gothic looking building in the background. So this is what we can do in our modern world. Glass towers that would hardly survive a strong weather anomaly. But they try to make this look like some of the older world buildings, which I thought was interesting. Nice try. Although I'll say sitting in here felt very weird. I had to get out and look at some brick buildings. I mean, what empires were building these? Because you can't tell me that this is some Henry Hobson Richardson type building built between three years in 1887 and 1890. I mean, look at this one. What's up with this? Man. Bricks. And check out these bricks. Custom shapes, rounded bricks. Look at all that. I wonder if the horse factory was doing that. Well, that's all I got for this one. I'm gonna end on this building, which is quite an eye opener, not just because of the bricks and quatrefoils, but appreciate you watching, appreciate everyone giving their insight and sharing. It's really helping the channel, it's helping me. I'm learning a lot uh, day to day, week to week. And certainly since I've begun this journey. So thank you. Have a good one. Stay blessed.